Charles Davis, there is so much going on at the NFL Scouting Combine, as there really? is every really? year. So there's, there's things happening here? There's a lot going on here, yeah. <laughs> and one of the main things that is being discussed is the Jacksonville Jaguars. Obviously, they have that first pick in the draft for the second year in a row. And it has been casually mentioned that they could be open to trading that number one pick. Who would be willing to trade with them? Well, Amy, you know normally that number one pick, if someone's going to trade up, we're talking quarterback, right? This is not the year for that at all. So if we're going to play this game, let's take the quarterbacks and set them aside because no one should be trading up to a number one to take a quarterback this year. And no, there's no disrespect intended. They're just not rated that highly. But how about a wild card, the Atlanta Falcons? Okay, I think they're sitting at eight. Can they come up and get that pass rusher they desperately need? Sacks were at a premium last year, pressure on quarterback at a premium, and right at the top of the draft, Aiden Hutchinson out of Michigan, the runner for the Heisman, Kayvon Thibodeau out of Oregon. Best two edge rushers in the draft rated by most people. If you're gonna make a move, and the beauty is we're talking about Jacksonville at one, I think they could make that move with someone a little bit behind that and possibly get up there and get the pass rusher, but they need that desperately. Here's another team that's been kind of the talk of the town, and that's the Giants. They've confirmed that they are somewhat over the cap. Yeah. They need to create some space. In the event that they were willing to trade someone, let's say a guy like Saquon Barkley. Boy, let's, let's just go big. Yeah, let's just go all the way with it. What's a potentially good landing spot for him? Well, within the division, no. Philadelphia <laughs> loves to run the football. But no, they're not going within the division to get him. Dallas, of course, Ezekiel Elliott, where is he in his career? Again, within the division, I don't see that happening. Here's my wild card for them. Go to the AFC, stay in state, and the Buffalo Bills. Sean McDermott as their head coach is a defensive-minded guy. He does not want to be one-dimensional. They throw it way more than they run it. He's not saying you'll be perfectly balanced in what you're doing. You're not going 50-50. You're still using Josh Allen as your main weapon but maybe that could take some pressure off of his legs. Devin Singletary had a bounce back year last year. Zach Moss trying to find his footing as well. You see what I did there with footing? That was pretty good. <laughs> Bottom line is Saquon Barkley there, running it, catching it, pass protecting, be, be an accessory piece to Josh Allen and what they're doing. That could be a big play for him and a boon to his career and to what Buffalo wants to do because Scott McDermott definitely wants to run it more. Here in Indianapolis, there are a lot of question marks around Carson Wentz and his future with the Colts. In the event that the two end up parting ways, is there another veteran quarterback who would be a good fit for the Colts? Well, the way the Colts run the football with Jonathan Taylor, Jimmy Garoppolo would be a natural coming from San Francisco because they run the heck out of the football, work off of play action. But my wild card is someone that you guys know pretty well. His name is Marcus Mariota. A guy who could get a second opportunity to be a starter again, a rebirth after sitting in Las Vegas after he left Tennessee. Could he be that type of a guy again? Working off a heavy run game with Jonathan Taylor, that big offensive line in front of him, his ability to run the ball himself, might be a nice little rebirth for him and back in the division where he started. You have some interesting thoughts, Charles <laughs> Davis. I like this. Yeah, I don't know how I don't know how good they are, <laughs> but they're interesting, right? Let's talk a little draft coming up. In your expert opinion, which do you think comes off the board first in the 2022 draft, a safety or a cornerback? A safety named Kyle Hamilton coming out of <laughs> Notre Dame. I think he's coming off the board early. Wouldn't surprise me if he's in the top five. I believe the Giants have five and seven. That might be the ideal spot because depending on what happens with these edge rushers, if Hutchinson goes early, if Thibodeau goes early before the top five, the Giants will have a decision to make. Edge rusher is always a, a, a prime guy, but Kyle Hamilton with his ability to drop in the box, but his ability to range, rove in center field, we keep coming back to it, but you're going to see it all through the draft process. The interception on opening night against Florida State, where he came from the middle of the field to the sideline, that demonstrates what he has. Big, strong, physical kid. No, we don't normally take safeties that high, but you take safeties that can cover. Kyle Hamilton can do that. As a former safety yourself, are there other safeties in this draft that have caught your eye that you really like? Well, the one I have the biggest man crush on is Jalen Petrie out of Baylor. Absolutely love him. Watch how he operated at the Senior Bowl. Plug in his tape and watch what he does. Ranges all over the field, makes plays. He has instincts that I call Tyron Matthew, Antoine Winfield. If you have a young man named Elijah Molden, mm -hmm. 
same type of instincts, knows where the football is, makes plays on the ball. That's why I like him so much. Let's talk about the cornerback from LSU, Derek Stingley. Does he have the most to lose or to gain in the weeks leading up to the draft? The answer is yes. <laughs> To both, because this is a kid that was a locked top five pick after his freshman year at LSU. He struggled a little bit the last couple of years. Some injuries have been involved. Obviously, we had the COVID year. So many things have gone into it, but you can't forget what we saw him coming out of the gate. Plus, the bloodlines are pretty excellent. His grandfather, Daryl Stingley, an NFL player. His father was an Arena Football League player. He's been trained right out of the womb to be a heck of a player. So he has a plenty to gain. Somebody might take a chance on him early, but let's say he slides a little bit. Someone hops on him. Oh my goodness, you've got a heck of a deal. I'm going to give you a second guy. Tight end named Trey McBride out of Colorado State. Kind of winning this process is kind of the consensus number one tight end. So I'm at the Senior Bowl. Love everything about him except I'm not sure he gets away from people. Everything he's doing is a contested catch. Can't wait to see him run here at the Combine. If he runs a really nice time, that might put him back as the number one guy. Otherwise, he's competing with Jalen Weidemeyer out of Texas A&M, Isaiah Likely out of Coastal Carolina. I could go on all day. A number of guys don't want to miss anyone, but he could, he's back into that mix. Oh, yeah, Greg Dulcich out of UCLA. Right. Former walk-on who can flat out fly. It's an exciting week here in Indianapolis. Absolutely, absolutely. So interesting thoughts. We don't know if they're good or not. But interesting. I like that word. Yeah, interesting thoughts. We'll take it. <laughs> Charles Davis, thank you so much. Thank you as always.